So today, we're gonna let the computer do the work for us. Welcome back, class, Mr. G here. Today, we're going over some AI-generated art designs and, and getting into how that can benefit our class. Again, welcome back class. I'm Mr. G, your online professor for art and other weird, cool things. So today we're getting into AI art designs. What is that? So I came across a video a while back that uh, I just started going down the rabbit hole of what is AI art and how can we build through this? All right, let's go ahead and rip the bandaid off. This is not NFTs. We are gonna talk about NFTs a little bit, but we're not. Gonna, I'm not going to go real deep into it because NFTs are not the same as the AI generated art. And there's a difference. We're getting into that in just a second. So first off, AI generated art, what is that? That is that is a computer that is using artificial intelligence to generate and create artworks. Now what they've done is, is they've compiled all of these notebooks on Google Colab. So if you don't have access to the Google Colab, and this is really for a school, computers where if the IT department hasn't given you guys access, get that access because it is a breath of wonderful things that you guys can get in there and play around with. People have done is they've used the Google servers, use the Google platform to help build sections of code that is then used to build these AI generated art pieces. Now breaking down the bits for this, one of the ones that we use a lot or that I've come across a lot is the the VQ Gone Plus Clip notebooks. And these ones are usually more for images or image creation. And again, I've, I'm only getting into scratching the surface and really just kind of wanted to show you guys that this exists and what you guys can do with it. And that's really kind of the niche of what we're doing today. And because I forgot, NFTs. All right, so this is layman's crash course, NFTs. Basic thing you need to know is the NFT is a non-fungible token. What does that mean? Bitcoin is a fungible token because it changes its price over time. It, it's not really um, standardized. The NFT will never change over time because it's non-fungible it doesn't change the problem of it is is that to get an nft working or to the point is not the artwork that we're making that is nothing really to do with it the whole concept of the nft is the blockchain the amount of code that is tied to that singleized single image or video or whatever you guys want to claim as an nft so don't go into this thinking that you're going to do this and make a whole bunch of money it's the same as a traditional art concept where you have to make you have to make a series of pieces that are really engaging to people and they want to buy your artwork and then having that publicized enough to where you're your mainstream or you're you're a sought after artist then you get major bucks off of your nfts that you would make so going in this with we're designing this simply for fun not so much to make a lot of cash just putting it out there. Once you open up Google Colab and you have, and you're pulling this in, I'm putting a, a link to the Google notebook that I was using in the link description below. So use that to generate your artworks with. There's a few code blocks that you have to click through. Now, breaking that down, you're not downloading anything, even though it says download the following. What you're doing is you're initializing everything that you're using to where it's using the RAM and the disk space, some of your local computer and some of the Google servers. So they're working in tandem together, using that to create the generated artworks with now this is kind of like a mixed bag of like are we going to get terminator out of this and yes it is going into that mindset because what we're doing is we're giving a computer algorithm a set of images or a set of code phrases and using those things to compile things together i know that some, most of you guys have run across having to click on click on all the stoplights or is this a boat or is this a plane? And you're starting to do that beforehand. We were doing the whole, the code where we we're having to put in uh, the security codes, where we're having to put in words and text in the way that, that it was hard to see because computers can't read that, but we're giving them information onto how to read that better. Is this a stop sign? Is this a plane? Is this a boat? You're giving the computer, you're helping the computer come up with ideas on how this stuff works. And using the AI art generator is another building block of that. So yes, we are aiding to building the computer super race and they're gonna take over the world and take out all the humans. No, I don't know. But what we are doing is making a stronger, mental capacity for computers, which I, that is a good thing because that gives us more learning processing power that gives us greater understanding of how we can make functionality and, and learning in a, in a broader scheme. You have a series of code blocks that you're going to click through. So the first one there you have, uh, you're going to download the art sections. And what this is, is it's initializing and downloading that section of images. Now it's not, again, it's not downloading these to your computer, but it's kind of setting up the parameters of this 
digital space. Up in the top right hand corner, you'll see RAM and disk space. You can do this as many times as you want for free until your disk space is full. If you purchase the pro version, you can do as much as you want. That After that, you're going down the parameters. Now, this is where the magic happens. This is where everything that you're going to put into creating the AI art design. So as we're going in here, I like to come up with weird, really expressive sentences. Why? Because the more details you can put into the, into the sentence, the more parameters, the more structure that the computer has to work with. So one of the ones that I did initially was, uh, this was in collaboration with my English teachers. They were, they're teaching Brit Lit right now. So they're doing the whole King Arthur round table. But one of my teachers, me and her, we love Marvel and we love talking about Marvel and Marvel things. Uh, so we were talking about what if Wakanda had a round table and what could we do with that? So that was one of the first iterations that we started pulling from. The Sword in the Stone, King Arthur's Round Table, stick, sticking with that Brit Lit concept. So then my, her, her students helped work on the phrasing. My students started putting those pieces into the computer to run those algorithms. So one of the sentences that we used was, King Arthur pulled the sword out of the stone and the light touched all four realms to bring peace back to the Wakandan Round Table. Done in Unreal Engine with light and I think we added color elements in there too. But what we've done is we've given a lot of information, specific information for the computer to find and start pulling those images out and creating those ideas that we wanted to see. So what did it do? Well, it took King Arthur and elements of King Arthur light as a color, as a design element. So we're, we're having light that's going to four corners. So it's going to try and find four places on the image to place the light strips going towards. Done in Unreal Engine is giving us a visual component, a graphics component to help building that art piece up. So if you play video games, most of the video games that we play are done in either a Unreal Engine, Unity, um, I think there's one that starts with an A, but I forgot what it is right now. These are common graphics engines that are big sections of code that help create generated imagery and create generated processes. That helps the computer figure out what style should it be. And I've done one in charcoal, pastel, watercolor, color pencils. I've had all of these testing out and they look phenomenal. Batman in charcoal, I thought was really cool. So you have all of these different ideas that you can apply to this. And what is this? How is this beneficial to the art classroom? What if you have just your brain is stuck and you can't come up with an idea and you need something to help fulfill that? Well, one of the tasks that I do for my students is if we're doing like a painting or a drawing lesson, I want them to get kind of un out of the box thinking going on. Coming up with these sentences, uh, the charcoal, the pastel, watercolor, they could put one of those in there. And then depending on if they want it in realism or if they don't want it in realism, I've done one by Da Vinci in High Renaissance. That gives me a different design uh, overall because then it's pulling Leonardo Da Vinci's complex structure and uh, putting that into the AI generated art piece. So it's giving the computer something to look for and help create those images around. Using that in the classroom to help benefit my students to figure out, they, they don't have to be the one who comes up with the original concept, the original idea, but then that they see what the computer did and we can just start dissecting that and using that as a critique. Is this art? Who came up with the art? Did we come up with the art because we came up with a sentence? The computer would just sat there and made it and didn't make anything until we were the ones who gave it something to make. Or is it the computer that's making it, even though we were the one who said we want this, or are we the client and the computer's the artist? This sets up a, a wonderful bit of discussion, conversation that we have in the classroom. And that's the stuff that I want you guys to do too, because that ex furthers the expression all for free using technology in the classroom without having to really break your brain and figure out where can we go get some new technology that isn't going to cost us anything. We can just experiment and try stuff out. That is one of those benefits of what I'm doing. Now, once you have rendered out those sentences, you've clicked through all those code blocks, you're generating it at the bottom after uh, when you generate it, there's a there's a few other videos and I'll put those links in the description so they have better tutorials on what I'm doing. I'm more like, why should we do this? Once you click through all of those check boxes, artwork will start to render out. I recommend going between five and 15, 500 and 1500 renders and that gives you the 
pretty much the best look that you're going to get after a certain point it's just refining the image and that's kind of a that's a hit or miss if you want that style or not that so that's completely up to you but the only way to save this is to go up to each picture right click on it save the image as and that saves it as the form that you want to do at the bottom and i don't know if this is still on there but you could download a video of the computer making the artwork very surreal looking because it's coming out of nowhere uh like the mirror in alice in wonderland you see the shimmer and all of a sudden you start to see an image evolve around it i think it's really cool i think it was, it was a fun fun activity and again this is not a solo one-off thing with a student you could ask and have a group of students who work on this and it comes up with all these different avenues of artworks that generate also using the same sentence after you use that once and you render out your piece and you want to do it again and not change anything you will get a different picture so how many times can you use the same structure of the sentence and get a different picture before the AI starts to evolve around the same thing. You're gonna have similar aspects, but each time it was slightly different from before. What if Tony Stark was the one who was forging a sword that was in the stone and used vibranium to, to, to build it with, which is taking it back to Daddy Stark, Howard Stark, Tony's father, who was the one who originally created the shield for Captain America. So you have all these little entanglements that you guys can do. So the Marvel Universe was great to use for this. It was wonderful to, to build all these concepts around and use them kind of interwoven together. So just a good thing. But again, uh, I'm just scratching the surface on this. I'm going to do a few of these, uh, I think over the summer and use them as little uh, summer tutorials so that we can keep the artwork going while you're not in the classroom. But let's go ahead and wrap up class there. We'll continue this on next class. First off, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, students as possibly can. Expand the message to the masses. Educating the masses is, is my game. Uh, that's what I like to do. If you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Have any answers to questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Um, so until then, happy computer creation. Yeah, sounds good. All right, later, guys.